Hey guys, it's May May and check this guy out. It is a huge bowling pin. Look how big he is. You can see him in my hands, right? I can't, well, I can wrap my hand around this tiniest part, but he's big. And I found him at a, kind of like a, like a flea market kind of. It's like a festival that we go to every year in our area and I got him for $3. Now I bought him last year and had every intention of making him for Christmas. But you know how things go with projects. One thing leads to another and we get to too many projects and he got left behind. So for Christmas in July, I knew I wanted to get him done. Now I keep saying him because he's going to be a snowman when we finish. This bowling pin has a shine to it. I don't know if they all do, but there's kind of a shiny... Um, texture on it so it's not really texture but a shiny coating so there so because of that I'm gonna use this puffy paint I bought and see if I can't use that for like eyes nose mouth and then the only thing I'm gonna use in regular paint is gonna be some for his nose I'm just gonna use some acrylic paint as long as we don't mess with it too much or if I put a coating over it it'll stay on but I think it'll be fine nobody's really gonna mess with him so this is gonna be our snowman now a couple things I'm gonna move him out of the way for a minute and I want him to be kind of folksy looking. I guess I do. I don't really, I'm not really good at that either. So I'm trying to push the limit. So I have these little rusty stars. I feel like I can use those somewhere. I have this fabric that we picked out at um, Hobby Lobby. And we thought this would be cute for the hat and for his scarf. These are a couple pieces left over from a project earlier this week where I made the three-tier snowman. These are left over from that. And then I have this from last year. And then three little black buttons for his tummy. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is what I'm afraid is going to be the hardest, and that is his hat. So I'm going to bring him over here, and I have my adhesive roll right here that has a little hole in it. I'm going to put him on that to keep him from rolling around, and I'm going to work on his head this way. And I want to create a little hat for the top of his head that's kind of got a little poof at the top. So I'm going to wrap this around like this to see how much I need as far as round goes. And then I'm going to cut this piece away. And I don't have to be perfect because I'm going to tuck this under anyway. Kind of do like a faux seam with some hot glue. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just getting the length established here. So you see how I did that? It just wrapped that around to give me an idea. And see, it already looks like a hat on his head. It's cute. And then the top of it, I'm just going to kind of poof it up. I think this is going to be cute. Okay. So scooting him out of the way. Let's work on putting this together. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to have a cuff at the top of his head. So I'm going to fold one edge up like this and glue that down so it'll have a little cuff. So get my hot glue out. And I'm using hot glue. You could certainly use a fabric glue. Um, you could use any glue you really are comfortable with with fabric. I just like hot glue because it's fast. And I like fast. And you know what? It's summertime so it means we don't necessarily have a whole lot of time in our craft room anyway. So fast projects are good. Now I want to kind of sew this together and I think what I'm going to do let's see I know I want to hide this portion I think I'm going to tuck an end under like this just to make a clean um, edge so let me tuck that end use some hot glue again and the cool thing is because I want him to be very folksy looking he can be kind of rough you know he doesn't have to be perfect at all kind of rugged looking is fine okay now then, let's bring him back over. Let's see if I can move him fairly easily. Now, the cuff I made will go there at the top of his little head, okay? And the seam I made right here, I'm going to lay it on top of this raw edge. So whenever you look at it, I'll show you like this. It looks clean. See how it looks tucked under? That's what I'm looking for. So let me figure out what's the back of him. I want to take these little, um, the wording on the sides and make sure that stays to the side. So I really don't care which part is the front or the back as long as those are on the side. So we'll do it like that. And I'm going to take this edge I want to hide and go ahead and glue it down kind of low in the back because I'm going to let his hat go at an angle. So I'm just going to put a little glue right here. And then I'm going to stick his little hat to the back. Just like that. Then I'll probably just kind of spin him. Let me show you if I spin him like this and I can just add glue as I bring the hat around. And like I said, I want the hat to kind of go up so I have a lot of face. Does that make sense? I want it to have a little angle on it. So let's put some more glue in place. I'm going to put it on the fabric so I can put the fabric where I want it. So now I'll just bring this around like so. And then I'm going to turn him over again and finish this off. Just 
just get that tucked around just like that so there's his front so see how his face is very open I have lots of room there for his face now let's do this part I want the hat to be poofy like this at the top so like basically I want to tie something around it to make that happen I'm thinking Baker's twine would be cute but I'm wondering if I should stuff it to keep it I'm going to put some cotton in there just to keep it kind of full so this is half of a paper towel and I'm going to just wad it up like this and I'm going to put it inside this hat I'm going to turn him over because this is where this seam is and we'll put it inside here and that'll help give it a little bit of stability I tried a full one in there and it was way too full so I just cut it down to half so now I've just kind of stuffed that. Now back here, I'm going to go ahead and glue this seam closed because it's going to be a mess if I don't. So just tack it in place with some glue. Lay it down. Just like that. All right, now I'm going to turn him back over and work from the front because I want to be able to look at him. So here he is. Now I'm going to take some baker twine and tie the top of his hat. I will probably put decoration over this anyway, but this will get me the, the shape I'm looking for. So let me wrap this up here. And pull that kind of tight. And I'm not, I'm not going to tie the knot yet because I want to be able to mess with it and get this where I want it. Okay, I don't like the paper towel in there, so I'm going to take it out. I think it was too much. I think uh, it was a good idea, but I think it just made it too fluffy. I don't think I needed that fluffy, so let's try it like this. Yep, I think that's going to be just fine. So now I'm going to tie a little knot. So there's his little hat so far. Isn't that cute? Okay, I'm going to stand him up and mess with it a little bit get it centered. You'll have to do this looking at you. So I know I'm off screen, but let's see if I can do it like this and you guys can see it too. So I'm just kind of pulling on the fabric to kind of get it where I want it. And if it's not perfectly in the middle, that's fine. Now then, let's work on this face. Now I want to show you what I did. I went online and found a face of a snowman that I really thought was cute that I wanted to kind of mimic. So I just took a picture of it on my phone so I could look at it. So I'm just going to sit that where I can see it. I'm going to lean it up here at myself like so. And I'm just going to use it as a guide. And I suggest you do that. If you want to use like a picture, a face from a coloring book, or even if you have a stamp set that has a cute snowman face, you can kind of mimic. Do that. All right. Should I do his nose first? I probably should since I'm painting it with a brush. Let me do that. All right. So I have some orange. It's really bright, but I think it's going to be fine. I don't really mind if his nose is kind of bright. So put a little orange on my brush and looking at that face that I wanted to mimic, I'm going to come over here and just kind of start his nose. I'm the worst at carrot noses. I always, I always overthink them. I don't know why I do that. I'm just trying to really look at what they've done and try to make it look like that. overthink your carrot noses because <laughs> I do I'm gonna make him a little bigger on the bottom just kind of bring it out a little bit and I'm gonna have to do two coats because this is very sheer so I'm gonna let that dry while I work on the rest and then do another coat all right let's do eyes and I like the way they did their eyes. They're very round. So I'm going to use this puffy paint and just kind of put down a bead. And just kind of move it around until I'm happy with it. Something like that. And then do another one over here. Just sort of move it around. Now their mouth is very smooth and I liked the smile shape. So I'm going to copy that smile shape just by running this around. Just like this, and they have little smile, little cheek marks on the end. Okay. Now I'm going to take this white and put some little highlight in his eyes. Just a little dot right on either side here. There we go. Now I'm going to touch 
touch up that nose a little bit. It really needs to be darker with all these dark colors I used. So I'm going to kind of tap this paint on to make it nice and thick. Now if you're good at painting faces, you could do this kind of in a toll painting kind of way. That would be super cute if you knew how to do those kind of folksy faces. I just don't know how to do them. Now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to come back with some black and kind of put some little lines in that note in the carrot because I think it'll be cute if it had some kind of definition in it. So let that dry. Now while he's drying, I'm going to work on his scarf. So I've cut a piece of that fabric just big enough to kind of go around him and tie. So I'm going to wrap this into here and tie it. Look how cute. <laughs> he is going to be cute. Tie it just like that. And then I like kind of the frayed look on it. So if it frays up, that's fine. I'm good with that. So that's probably not going to lay like I want it to. So I'm going to come right here and put a little glue down. It's because he's laying down. When he's standing up, that'll lay right. But just because I want him to look right for you guys, I'm going to glue it in place. Just a touch of glue. Okay. So there's his little scarf, and now let's put his buttons on, right down the middle. His little head is squished against the wall, bless his heart. Okay, so button number one. I'm going to go right here. Cute. And I like to leave the buttons kind of high because I want his belly to look round. If you bring them down, it kind of thins him out. So I'm going to show off the roundness of the bowling pin by leaving them kind of high. So there's two. And then one more. He's looking so cute, guys. I'm liking him. Right there. Cute, cute. Let me show you how cute. Okay, now I have a little greenery, like I told you, that I want to add to him, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna look at this and see if I want to put this on him or this. I don't know, I don't really love that on him. I think I am going to use these two pieces that came from a leftover project, but I'm going to cut them down some. They're a little too long. By doing that, I'll make myself multiple pieces, and then I can just glue them on where I want them. So a little glue here. Go ahead and stick several pieces in there. Like that. Let's put some more on top. I'm going to let that cool for a second because it's moving around a good bit. So now I have some of these little stars I took off of that little metal embellishment that I had. I'm going to put a couple of them on here. I think that'll be cute. One down here. Then one over here. Just to cover the center up. And those bad boys get hot because they're middle. Now while those continue to dry, I want to add one to the top of his hat. And I want to add it kind of in this area. And I'm going to put a little greenery behind it too. I think that'll be cute to have just a little bit back there to match his little shirt or his little scarf. His shirt. I guess that is a snowman shirt, isn't it? Alright, so there's a little piece there. Now I have this little puffy paint and I'm going to try this on the carrot nose. I'm not necessarily going to outline it. I'm just going to come in and put some little little black little lines in that orange paint. I 
something like that. Then I'm gonna take this dotting tool, the fine edge, and kind of rub through that just to kind of make it not so cartoony. Just to kind of pull more of a point out of it. And there we go. This is our bowling pin snowman. I just love him. I think he looks super cute. I can't wait to show him to you in picture so you can see his whole little self. Let's try to squeeze him in there as good as we can. Let's see. <laughs> That's pretty good. So there he is. Thanks so much, guys, for joining me for this week of Christmas in July. This is our last video, but it's been super fun. And I'll tell you what, yesterday, if you saw the snowflake video where we tried to do it and we had a fail, a lot of you have given me suggestions that I want to try and I want to redo that video. So Joe and I are going to do that again for you guys. So somewhere in the next few weeks, you'll probably see that. Maybe next week. We want to try that again. So even though it's after Christmas in July, we're going to try it again to see if we can make it happen. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I'll see you again today for a Love Summer Art Project. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.